the gentleman from Montana. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my amendment number 59 reduces spending specifically. It cuts funding for the Army Corps of Engineers back to the fiscal 22 levels. This year's appropriation would increase Army Corps' funding by $910 million from last year. My amendment would reduce funding for the Army Corps by $620 million in order to bring it back to fiscal 22 levels. That still leaves in place a $290 million increase. Unfortunately, the Army Corps of Engineers has a long history of running over budget and out of schedule. The solution to the Army Corps wasting taxpayers' money is not to reward them with more money. Instead, we must demand that the Army Corps of Engineers be more responsible and more efficient. In Montana alone, there are multiple instances of the Army Corps projects running well beyond their budgets and then turning to state and local governments to make up the cost. The Army Corps has shown a complete dereliction of duty by trying to transfer cost operation and maintenance of the Fish Bypass Channel, which is part of the Lower Yellowstone Irrigation Project. The Army Corps is shifting operating costs that they agreed to take on to the farmers and ranchers who are already facing increased costs. In fact, before the Army Corps of Engineers even cut the ribbon on this project, it was in need of repairs. I witnessed it myself. The Lower Yellowstone Irrigation Project was created as part of the Newlands Reclamation Act signed into law in 1902. The purpose of the Lower Yellowstone Irrigation Project is to divert water from the Yellowstone River to irrigators in eastern Montana and western North Dakota. Currently, the Lower Yellowstone Irrigation Project is a dependable, reliable source of irrigation water for approximately 58,000 acres of land in four irrigation districts across Montana. The Army Corps of Engineers proposed a fish bypass channel in Montana to address the pallid sturgeon populations in the Lower Missouri River because it was cheaper, not out of the goodness of their heart. The farmers did not ask for, nor did they receive, more water or a better system. No, as a matter of fact, just quite the opposite has happened. The system doesn't function as well, and it costs them more to operate. The Army Corps now wants to wash its hands from this project and pass the cost to 350 families and communities that rely upon this irrigation to provide for their livelihoods. This burden from the lack of planning by the Corps of Engineers should only be transferred onto a third party that is at fault. The government is the only one who decided to place the pallid sturgeon on the endangered species list and should pay for the consequences and costs resulting from that action. Not the small community that has relied upon this irrigation for over past century. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would uh, reserve. General reserves. General, for what purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee rise? Excuse me. Yes, Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I rise to oppose the amendment. The gentleman is recognized. I uh, wish to thank my friend, the distinguished gentleman from Montana, for offering this and, uh, amendment. Uh, I know many of us uh, have frustrations with some of the Army Corps projects. Um, however, this reduction by $620 million uh, I must oppose for several reasons. The reduction proposed in this amendment would, in my view, jeopardize critical ongoing Corps of Engineer projects across this great country, including in my district, the great Chickamauga Lock project in the third district of Tennessee. All too often, the Corps of Engineers fails to finish what it starts. This bill provides funding to complete a number of significant projects and if cut of this magnitude would, in my view, undermine public safety and America's economic competitiveness. It's in that regard I respectfully urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment. I yield back. I yield back. Gentleman from Montana is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, fiscal 22, Corps of Engineers, $8.34 billion. Fiscal 23, $8.66 billion. Fiscal 24, $9.57 billion. We cannot continue to reward bad behavior. A recent project in Texas, the Ike Dyke, 
Coastal Barrier Project is currently projected to cost $57 billion, representing the most largest civil engineering project in United States history, which is 68% higher than the recent estimate, which was at $34 billion. There's not a contractor that has built a home that would have a homeowner abide by those types of terms and conditions. How can the Army Corps of Engineers be allowed to receive such a massive amount of funds when their project estimates are so routinely off base and their time frames with which they are estimating to complete them are just as bad? A project in Michigan for a new lock in the Sioux is currently projected to cost $394 million more than the Biden administration's proposed funding. The list goes on and on and on. We cannot continue to reward this bad behavior. I reserve. General reserves. General has the only time remaining. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, once again, we've seen these projects go over budget, over time. The Corps of Engineers should not be rewarded. I hope that Gentleman's my colleagues time's expired. Will... Thank you. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Montana. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Depending on the chair, the noes have it.